over 80 years, alcohol has undergone a series of studies and experiments relating to the effectiveness of terminating alcoholism via taste aversion. Within such studies, the results have been highly varied, with many studies confirming that taste aversion is a valid technique to distinguish the consumption of alcohol, yet others have displayed a negative result, ultimately questioning the theory. One in which is a 1978 study by Timothy B. Baker and Dale S. Cannon, which has measured the effectiveness of taste aversion therapy within Salt Lake Veterans Administration Hospital. Previously, electric shock aversion was greatly used with studies from R. L. Helkins, Hallam, Reichman, and Falkowski in the 1975 studies, which aimed to find a benefit within electric shocking. Such studies were not encouraging, ultimately suggesting that each participant is more afraid of a shock rather than the interest to stop drinking, which has halted the research into electric shock aversion therapy and a further evaluation has been added to taste aversion. I chose a piece by Baker and Cannon due to its unique nature, as it involves two similar experiments in one study. It also seemed to reflect the original question best out of the three articles and allowed the best understanding of the term taste aversion therapy. The piece also demonstrated a solid foundation to the future studies in taste aversion therapy. Baker's and Cannon's 1978 experiment investigated the validity of taste aversion therapy on alcoholism, which would in turn restrict such habits and affect physical and mental behaviour towards beverage. Taste aversion therapy incorporates a form of treatment which aims to distinguish unwanted behaviour. Often the technique is associated with Ivan Pavlov's theory of classical conditioning. A conditioned stimulus is linked with an unconditioned stimulus and through constant association, the conditioned stimulus will cause a conditioned response, which is learned. Within taste aversion therapy, the aim is to develop a conditioned response to alcohol, which in turn is supposed to lower the chances of subsequent alcoholism. In order to do so, there must be a negative association between alcohol and consumers. Within the experiment, Baker and Cannon use the technique of deception to associate the feeling of nausea and sickness to the consumption of alcohol and, and not to the immediate. Therefore, it is hypothesized that the consumption of alcohol would decrease over time and hence a lower rating by each participant. Baker and Cannon assembled two experiments. So experiment two consisted of higher volume of alcohol consumed and added emphasis on flavor and was conveniency. The procedure was a modification of an already used program by Lemire and Volkowitzmann. In 1950, which introduced the use of only two participants and the use of immediates. Experiment 1 consisted of a 28 year old man with a five year history of heavy drinking, which classified him as an alcoholic. The participant was a volunteer who had been previously hospitalised for alcohol related illness, had several arrests for driving while being intoxicated. The patient was tested for any internal illness, as these may be detrimental to research and alcoholic consumption. His longest period of abstinence lasted for four to six weeks, but his long, longest heavy drinking period was over two months, in which he drank a minimum of 750 mils of alcohol per day. The patient had stated his two favourite drinks for vodka and bourbon. Prior and after the experiment, <coughs> two psych psychophysiological recording sessions and two taste sessions were conducted in order for the patients to gain appropriate feel for the test and also distinguished expectations <coughs> for the experiment. As the experiment began the patient, the patient was of three non-alcoholic beverages, cola, lemon lime soft drink and water, and three alcoholic <coughs> beverages, port wine, beer and vodka. The volunteer was given the aim to rate each beverage via bipolar semantic scale, which asked him to describe each drink, which would provide a respectable reasoning for the patient to drink, as such aims created uh, created credibility for the experiment. In order for the experiment to work, each volunteer was injected with 20 mils of Epipen, which acted as a medic and results in the feeling of nausea and prolonged the illness. Experiment 1 started with an oral consumption of the uh, PD, the PPAC, sorry, which was followed by 30 ml of vodka shot to ensure that the alcohol was the most predominant taste. From then, the patient had the job to taste each alcoholic and non-alcoholic drink, or which there was no limit of. The experiment was then sent to the experiment 
I was then concluded with a beer consisting of a solution which prolonged the nausea again. And was sent to the, and was sent to bed instructed to think about the problems and the consumption of alcohol or it had caused. A graph represented the consumption of each beverage with a constant decrease in consumption of the alcoholic drinks and a slight increase with the consumption of non-alcoholic drinks, and ultimately respect representing a lack of desire for the alcoholic drink. Furthermore, it seemed that such statements were confirmed via a graph representing the taste ratings identified, identifying spirits, wine, and beer being each extremely or very negative. Experiment one represented an understanding of a taste of taste aversion therapy and suggested that it may help relegate the alcohol review. Yet, from the collection of data, it was suggested that the hypothesis was confirmed for the consumption of wine and vodka, but was problematic for beer. For beer. The consumption of beer decreased, but the results did not show whether it was due to psychophysiological evidence, which may be due to error in measurement procedure or to the lack of aversion. From this, Baker and Cannon stated that experiment one simply did not prove that there was a change in the individual's behaviour following the treatment. The change in, changes in the patient's behaviour, rating, heart rate and skin response were all only temporarily conditioned. But the results of the experiment one displayed that the effects of a taste aversion may distinguish alcoholism. The objective of experiment two was to identify whether an increased flavour contingency can affect the consumption of alcohol whilst using taste aversion. Experiment two differed from one as it applied more control. The aim of the experiment was to see if aversions occurred due to flavours of particular alcoholic beverages or on the taste of ethanol. The participant was a 29-year-old male patient from Salt Lake VA, Hosp VA Hospital Alcohol Treatment Unit. The patient had a history of alcoholism from the age of 16 and had a serious problem three, for three to five years. He portrayed beverages such as beer and bourbon. The participant followed the procedure as the uh, same procedure as uh, participant one, with the exception of the volume of alcohol. The patient had three meals rather than two meals of alcohol squirted in his mouth to see, to see more accurate discrimination to flavours. Like participant one, patient two was given his three favourite drinks, berry, uh, sherry, wine, beer and spirits, and also the non-alcoholic drinks, which were cola, lemon, lime, soft drink and, uh, and water. Again, the individual was instructed to rate each beverage from the bipolar semantic scale. It seemed the sooner the introduction of a flavour, the, the sooner the introduction of a flavour, the consumption of the beverage became smaller. Furthermore, the ratings of each beverage stayed constant until the fifth, sixth, and seventh session, where the results correlated to those of experiment one. Hence, providing the conclusion that flavour illness contingency does in fact supply the version. The visual graph split displayed the strongest version from spirit, and beer having the weakest version. With a simple rationale to develop a conditioned response to alcohol and hence a long-term conditioned response which in turn would decrease the consumption of alcohol, it seems that the reason was still not validated. The results suggested that the hypothesis was supported, yet the lack of experimental evidence demonstrated the presence of extraneous variables and hence that effect affected the results. For example, cognitive changes, dissonance reduction, guilt and placebo effects would have played a part in the results. Though the whole rationale wasn't supported, the results displayed a strong validation with the first aspect suggesting that aversion therapy results in conditioned alcohol aversion. It seems it was the flaws within the study which caused a lack of experimental data and enhanced a lack of validity. Within future uh, experiments, there must be a larger study sample in order to relegate extraneous variables and also provide possible generalization if the results are positive. The larger population would need to be randomly allocated into independent groups, one undergoing the measures of experiment one, the other undergoing the measures of experiment two. As the version was weakest for beer, the next experiment should put emphasis on beer and try developing a stronger version on that. This would be done by supplying only beer to the participants, but possibly for providing a larger quantity of beer than spirits and wine. Even though each of the suggestions will allow the experiment to be done better, it also means that the study will require higher financial cost and more time must be provided by exper experimenters and participants.
other than such errors, Bacon Cannon's experiment provided a beneficial insight to the advantages of taste aversion. The aim and hypothesis were supported, and the results allowed most of the rationale to be confirmed. The, constant, the importance of safe, uncontrolled stimulus was also very important within the experiment. The use of the EpiPak at small concentrations allowed the, uh, allows the adequate amount of nausea and illness, while avoiding the dangers and possible poisoning. All in all, the experiment provided a hope in relegating the habit of alcoholic behaviour, with minor detriments in experimental data, which will help with future experiments. Thank you for listening to my speech, and I hope you enjoyed, my, enjoyed it and enjoyed the background too. Thank you.